if anyone is going to be charged and forced to remain in jail, forced to be serving prison time for an obstructing an official proceeding, then Jabal Bowman should face the exact same fate for every single January 6th defendant. He should have told Capitol Police immediately that he made a mistake as he claimed. But it wasn't a mistake, Mr. Speaker. It was on purpose. It was intentional. Mr. Speaker, it is it's really rich to get a lecture from someone about civility who stood on this House floor uh, and screamed and interrupted the President of the United States during his State of the Union. Or someone who comes, or somebody who continues to circle the wagons and cheer on the insurrectionists who attacked this Capitol violently on January 6th. I was the last person off the House floor on that day, and I saw what happened. And for people to come down here and defend those actions, it is pathetic and disgusting. Were you aware of this? Uh, uh, Congressman, as I said, I haven't seen the photos that you're holding up uh, before. Maybe, well, I posted them on my Twitter account. It's, it's public. You know, maybe I don't you guys spend are, a lot of time on Twitter. Well, you know, you, you sh oh, I'm sure you do because the Department of Homeland Security and organized with other offices has censored many Americans, including myself. I'm not me, part of the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, right, Mr. Ray, you should, you, should be, you should be interested in investigating terrorism. And this right here is proof that we had terrorists in our own office building, Global Intifada. And you rely on the Southern Poverty Law Centers. Katrina Bleakley is one of the organizers. I'll send this over to your office so maybe perhaps you can stop targeting innocent grandmothers and veterans who walk through the Capitol on January 6th and might, after, might actually go after people tied to Hamas, tied to Hezbollah, and likely Iran. Mr. Ray, are you interested in members of Congress that are, that are organized and participating in a Facebook group that has ties to Hamas? Uh, we're not investigating people for participating in a Facebook group. This is the Democrat and the Biden administration's effort to erase our history, just as they have done to the statue of Robert E. Lee. This is an outrage. This is exactly what they do in communist countries. And the Democrats want to accuse us of book burning while we try to get pornography books out of our children's schools. The Democrats will do nothing to stop their attempts to destroy our nation's history. Just to clear up a couple of things, my colleague mentioned the Founding Fathers. Robert E. Lee was not actually one of the Founding Fathers. He was a general of the Confederacy. That was the city of Charlottesville. That wasn't a national monument That when that statue was removed. And I, I just have to say, uh, I find it rich that the party that has supported book banning in our libraries um, rewriting curriculum, not talking about our history over and over again, is the very one that is saying that we have to often keep painful monuments in places where they do damage, where they interfere with people's ability to enjoy the particular area that they're in and leave it to the Department of Interior to have that discretion. So if we're gonna get into talking about book banning and rewriting history, let, let's have an honest debate about it and talk about the differences between our two parties on this. Secretary Mayorkas, I want you to look at these innocent Americans. Do you see them? I do, Congresswoman. They are dead. They're from Dalton, Georgia in my district. They're dead because a 17-year-old, likely affiliated with the cartels, was smuggling illegal aliens into our country in Texas, breaking our laws, and this happens every single day in our country. Earlier this week, eight Republicans joined the Democrats and protected your job. But I want you to know, you have a short time coming. You can honorably resign or we are going to impeach you. And it's happening very, very soon. Mr. Ray, do you remember on October 18th when the Capitol complex uh, was illegally occupied, breaking same laws, that you have hunted down Americans for from January 6th. Are you familiar with this? I don't recognize the picture that you're holding. Well, because maybe your agents haven't been doing a good job into investigating the organizers that broke the law, illegally occupied this very building that we're sitting in right now, and over 300 of them were arrested. Some of them attacked police officers. 
I haven't seen on the news where the FBI is hunting them down with helicopters, tanks in the streets, raiding their homes with flashbangs, targeting these people, watching these people, throwing them in jail for them to stay in pre-trial in solitary confinement for years before they ever face trial. You wanna know what this says? I'll tell you. This is one of the organizer's phones and this is a chat and it says at the top, Global Intifada. Now, while we're talking about terrorism today, are you familiar with the term Intifada? Uh, I've certainly heard the term. Do you know the definition? I'm not gonna try to define it, but. It means Arab uprising or jihad. Are you concerned about jihad in this country? I, I am, and I have consistently testified to that effect. Yes, but are you interested in using the, the FBI you are the director of the FBI. Do you hunt down terrorists in our country? Those that would be responsible for jihad? Absolutely, and that's why we've had jihadist-inspired terrorism at our highest national threat priority level since the day that I started as FBI director. Do you still use the Southern Poverty Law Center as a source? You, you use them. The FBI used the Southern Poverty Law Center as a source when targeting Catholics. Are you still using the Southern Poverty Law Center as a source? Congresswoman, what I think you're referring to is the so-called Richmond intelligence product, uh, which we, as soon as I learned about it, I was horrified, withdrew it. We had an inspection done, and part of the problem that we found with that particular product, that particular office, is precisely what you're talking about, the reliance on uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center and the way in which they relied on it. Well, you relied on the Southern Poverty Law Center, but I would have you know, Mr. Ray, that this one right here, this person involved in the global Intifada group that illegally, they broke the law, came in and occupied the Cannon Office House building, interrupted Congress, interrupted hearings. Right here, Katrina Bleakley is the lead attorney for the Southern Poverty Law Center. Are you interested in members of Congress that are, that are organized and participating in a Facebook group that has ties to Hamas? Uh, we're not investigating people for participating in a Facebook group. A, a Facebook group that is tied to Hamas? We have multiple investigations into individuals affiliated with Hamas uh, and their active investigations. You're going to tell me as FBI director you will not investigate Americans or United States members of Congress that are linked to known terrorists? That's not what I said. Are you going to investigate or not? We are going to investigate individuals who are affiliated with Hamas if they meet our standards for predication, which are longstanding standards set by uh, this department and the prior department and the department before that. I would hope to God that Intifada and Jihad and terrorists in our very country would be something that you would prioritize instead of a three-hour event that happened at the Capitol nearly four years ago, Mr. Ray. I yield back my time, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to apologize to the American people. Uh, I want to apologize that Republicans are wasting your hard-earned taxpayer money with yet another stupid and meaningless censure resolution instead of doing anything that will help the American people. Jamal Bowman is a good man, a decent man, a kind man. He was rushing to exit a House office building so we could go vote, and he activated a fire alarm in the process of trying to open the door. Did he destroy government property? No. Did he obstruct a, 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 any, uh, an official proceeding? No. Did he wield a deadly weapon? No. Did he assault or injure anyone? No. But did he apologize and take responsibility for his actions? Yes, he did. Which is more than we can say for January 6th, when this building was desecrated by an angry mob sent by Trump to overturn an election. And Republican members of this body still act like nothing happened. How disgusting. What a, what a, how offensive it is to the men and women who protect us that my friends on the other side of the aisle continue to act like nothing happened that, that day. Look, at the end of the day, this has nothing to do with Congressman Bowman. And my friends know that. It is about deflecting from how unhinged this majority is. They had to expel one of their own members last week, for God's sake. The first speaker in history to be ousted. Nothing of any consequence to show 
for an, for an entire year in the majority. Nothing. You have done nothing. You've wasted time on stupid measures like this. Nothing. Look, this whole exercise is just nuts. For Republicans, it's all about appeasing their orange overlord at Mar-a-Lago who can do no wrong. They don't care about governing. They aren't fit to govern. They aren't concerned about the serious and complex issues facing this country, the world, or the people we represent. For them, being in power is all about retaliation and revenge and the destruction of their perceived enemies. It is time for the Republican Party to grow up. Mr. Speaker, I, I don't want to waste another second on this meaningless resolution. This is pathetic. You have, my, the Republicans have turned this chamber into a place where trivial issues get debated passionately and important ones not at all. Right. My friends have done nothing, not a damn thing, for the people that they say they represent. How, do you, how can anybody on the other side of the aisle go home with a straight face and say that you're representing your constituents? You, pr you produce nothing for them. You've turned this place into a joke. My amendment prohibits funds from being used to remove any monument on land under the jurisdiction of the Department of Interior. For too long, communist Democrats have been hell-bent on erasing our culture, way of life, and our history, whether we agree with it or not. As George Orwell wrote in 1984, they want a future in which every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book has been rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street and building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And that process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. And history has stopped. Nothing except, exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. In 2020, nearly 168 Confederate symbols were removed across the United States, many of which were violently torn down by radical BLM Antifa activists that burned American cities to the ground. Most recently, the statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee that stood for nearly a century in Charlottesville, Virginia, was dismembered and melted down in a 2,250-degree furnace. The news media was quick to flood social media with video posts of the statue's head melting down in fire. This was the message. The communists in our country have made it clear that they will not stop with Robert E. Lee and will continue to do this until George Washington's statue is burning in fire. Look, this amendment is one more controversial poison pill policy writer that sadly shows that the Republicans are not interested in bills that can gain bipartisan support and become law. The amendment would prohibit the Department of Interior from removing any monument on land under their jurisdictions. There can be many reasons a monument would need to be removed. Health and safety of visitors and staff. This amendment provides no latitude for the department to steward the land and resources they are responsible for. In 15 days, the government will shut down Yet we are spending time on a bill that will never become law and on this superfluous, <laughs> superfluous uh, partisan poison pill rider. We should be focused on creating a bipartisan bill that abides by the agreement reached in the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2023. So let's do the job we were elected to do, ensure the American people receive the benefits and services they are entitled to. 